Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include First Big Snowfall of the Year, Addictions Awareness Week, Participants Wanted for New TV Series, Quest for the Sea, Art Health Clinic, These Stories Plus Community Events, The BBS Playbill, Off the Rack, and more coming up after this. Participation. Finding solutions. Getting active is easy. And Canada's Physical Activity Guide shows just how easy it is. Rosella chooses to go skating with her daughter, Leticia. They're having fun, and they're also enjoying the benefits of physical activity. Physical activity is one of the ways in which we have so much fun together. Rosella's solution is a participation solution. Try it. On Sunday, November the 17th, at approximately 6 p.m., it began to snow. This turned out to be the first big snowfall of the year. It continued to snow throughout the evening. By Monday morning, it had turned to rain, and Burju awoke to a very wet and slushy road conditions. For those who had to leave for work and students going to school, it was not ideal driving or walking conditions. The town loader was out on the go early, clearing the roads. It continued to rain all day, and by the next morning, most of the snow was completely gone. You can use for wine or beer for only $49.99. Oh, what kind of wine can you make? What kind of wine do you want? I don't know. Well, Brews and Views, what a selection. They got some new kinds up from Wine Pool Limited. There's Vintage 28, that's 28 bottles in 28 days. Uh, pretty cleanly, and they're, they're going to be polluting the atmosphere as well, so... But uh, anyway, uh, we leave that one and go with a school advisory here, Pat. And that's special model, too, I guess. Mean. Probably so, yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got two school notes, Bill. Tricentia Academy Arnold's Cove, further delay. Another note that... Participants wanted to recreate Newfoundland's history in a new television series called Quest for the Sea. One of our viewers dropped this news release off to us. She felt that some of you may be interested in this. Frantic Films is looking for participants to recreate the traditional outport community life of Newfoundland in a new living history documentary series, Quest for the Sea. Quest for the Sea will be filmed in the summer of 2003 in an historical Newfoundland outport and is expected to air on history television in early January 2004. The producers are searching for families who have ties to Newfoundland outports in order to select a small group who will recreate this traditional way of life. Perhaps you've always wanted to visit after hearing members of your family tell stories of life in the outport. Perhaps you have memories of the place you once lived and wish to return. This series can make that dream come true. The individuals selected will create a community and live in the traditional way for a period of two or three months. Activities will include and lining for cod in wooden dories, making fish, tending the garden and animals, and other traditional outport tasks. Merchants will visit the outport at the beginning and end of the season, and it will need to ensure that they have enough supplies to carry them throughout the summer. In addition, although this quest will end in September, they must try to make enough fish to survive the winters, as they would have in the day. Interested participants must be in good physical condition with no serious medical conditions. Each person will be subject to a medical exam, psychological and physical testing, and a criminal check before they are being selected. In the release, James Brown, CEO and executive producer of Frantic Films, stated that Newfoundland is incredibly beautiful and has a tremendously rich history. The outports are the heart of Newfoundland and we want to share these stories of their way of life to audiences across Canada and around the world. Applicants are to send a resume outlining both relevant life experiences and job experiences along with a cover letter explaining why they wish to participate in the documentary. It is also recommended that interested participants send a short videotape of themselves expressing why they would like to participate. Photographs are also required. 
All applications and videotapes must be received by 5 p.m. on Wednesday, November the 27th, 2002. Producers will be visiting St. John's on December 1st and 2nd to conduct interviews with successful applicants, so anyone applying from Newfoundland area should be available on these days. If you are interested, please contact Frantic Films at their email address, quizforthec at franticfilms.com. Their fax number is 204-949-0050 or at their mailing address at 370 Arthur Street, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3B1G7. Attention, Desiree Single. If you are interested, call our office for the mailing addresses. November the 17th to the 23rd was National Addictions Awareness Week. The Addictions and Mental Health Counselor, Kathy Cutler, has set up a display at the Calder Health Care Center's main lobby with literature on the different types of addictions, fact sheets, and pamphlets. The students at A.J. Matthews got involved by drawing pictures on paper bags that will be used at the local liquor store. Students could draw a safety message on the bags. Most of them drew, please don't drink and drive, and there were prizes awarded. Caitlin Spencer won for the primary section, and Jeremy Ann was awarded the prize for the elementary school section. Communities and school representative Ellen Swift put up bulletin boards on behalf of the addiction and mental health counselor Kathy Cutler, reminding all students the dangers of drinking and driving and drugs, among other reminders. The HELP Committee organized a community family feud for Addictions Awareness Week. The public was invited to attend to watch the seven teams test their knowledge on addictions issues. The teams included the Lions and Lioness, students from the Community Youth Network, the Fire Department, the teachers, Police Plus, SJCH Student Council, and the Calder Health Care Center. This was open to all ages and the committee served food and refreshments before the championship game. Kelly Tucker was asked to draw the ticket for the door prize and the lucky winner was Levi Rose. The winning team were presented t-shirts and certificates. All other participants were given certificates as well. Here's a few highlights. This will be shown in its entirety at a later date. On Wednesday, the Public Health Office held its annual Art Health Lifestyle Clinic. The clinic began at 10 a.m. and ran until 4 p.m. and was brought to you by your public health nurse and 11 trained volunteers. The Art Health Clinic has been around since 1997. When you first arrived, you were greeted at the registration desk. Here you were given your personal information sheet and you signed your name to a slip of paper for a chance to win one of these prizes. The fruit baskets were donated by the volunteers. There was a t-shirt and a lunch bags with mug, a pin and a keychain. In the registration area, the Art Health Coalition had a display set up with lots of information on good health. There were quite a few recipes, fact sheets, 
an healthy art shopping guide, cookbook, and eating handbook. Everyone attending the clinic was encouraged to help themselves to the literature. When your number was called, you went into one of three rooms. Rose Youngs kindly agreed for us to follow her around. We were measured and weighed and had our body mass index measured. Next, we had our blood pressure taken. Our blood pressure was good. The blood glucose test was next. Both of us checked out great air as well. Each of these checkups were done by the volunteers. There were 190 people who went through the clinic and 20 were referred for blood pressure and 5 were referred for blood glucose. The four fruit baskets were won by Gloria Ingram, Laura Parsons, Alma Lushman, April Anderson. Gordon Sims won the t-shirt and the lunch bags with the mug, pin and keychain was won by Trina Young, Edward Rollison and Doris McDonald. The public health nurse sends her sincere thanks to each and every volunteer for their time, assistance and extraordinary effort in making the clinic such a success. Many thanks to the public for their support. We were invited to the bank on Thursday of this week to see the items that they have on display for their annual Christmas Janeway fundraiser. The bank staff has collected six different Christmas decorations for their Janeway fundraiser. The items include this Christmas swag, wreath, table centerpiece, Santa Claus, and a reusable Christmas can filled with chocolates. Also included is this decorative Christmas tablecloth. Tickets cost $1 each or three for $2 and are available from any bank staff member. Draw date will be Tuesday, December the 24th. Please support the Janeway. Buy your ticket on this beautiful Christmas collection. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review coming up after this. Participation. Finding solutions. Getting active is easy. Canada's physical activity guide shows just how easy it is. Larry chooses to play volleyball with neighbors. They're having fun. They're also enjoying the benefits of physical activity. Well, it's just unbelievable fun. I'll have a great time. Larry's solution is a participation solution. Try it. This week, we went to the school to get a school report from Mr. Linan, principal of the HJCH, and Mrs. Doreen Bidwall, principal of the A.J. Matthews Elementary School. Being with us today, Doreen. Okay. Which is my pleasure. Uh, we just dropped by to see some of the activities that you've been doing since school started. Um, I know you've been doing lots of things, so you want to give us a quick I'll update? Give just a little brief yes. update. Sure. Now, before, uh, I, I'd just like to refer you to a couple of documents. First of all, okay. just, uh, this is our annual report and each year our school um, puts out, and all schools in the province as a matter of fact, puts out a school report card, it's called, and it's an annual report of the activities that take place in the school throughout the year. Now this is ours for last year and that is a public document and any parent who would want to read it, it's available here at the office for them. We present it to the school council members so they've already seen it and the school board does. And uh, the other document I'd like to bring to your attention is uh, school growth plans. Uh, all of the activities that we do within our each school year is uh, really related to our school growth plans. At the end of each school year, our staff and all staffs in the provinces, our, not, not just our school, but we uh, discuss our strengths and needs for the school and uh, where we're going to go from there. So this year, our um, school growth initiatives center around student achievement, of course, which is why we have schools, and around uh, our learning environment, improving our learning environment, and uh, improving technology skills, both from a teacher perspective and from a student perspective. Now, 
Uh, I'd like to talk first of all about uh, our student achievement and some of the things that are ongoing within our school related to that. Um, as many parents know, we've had uh, quite a heavy focus on literacy over the past number of years and most parents, especially at the grade 3 and grade 6 level, are uh, familiar with criterion reference tests. Last year, both our grade 3 students and our grade 6 students were involved in criterion reference tests. Grade 3 students did uh, reading and writing uh, criterion reference tests, and we do have the results back from that. And our grade 6s did uh, reading, writing, and math, and we had the results back for those as well. Uh, in mathematics, our grade 6 students performed above the district and the province overall, and their uh, performance was uh, quite uh, pleasing, uh, especially in an area that students do not perform very well in, that's problem solving. Our students performed uh, very high in that area, and we were very pleased to see that. Now, that's an area that we have been focusing on with our students because it uh, it's an area in which they have to use higher order thinking skills. And it's an area not only in math that we need to work on with our students, but in all areas. And uh, over the years, our students have not performed well in those areas, so we were pleased to see that. Uh, from a literacy perspective, our grade three students showed significant improvements in uh, all areas from uh, previous uh, criterion reference tests in literacy. And our grade six students we're on par with the district and province. In the area of informational texts, our students perform very well, and poetry. But in the area of narrative texts, that's like storybooks and things, and novels, our students are performing below where we want them to perform. So there's still work to be done. There's quite a considerable amount of work and staff are now in the process of analyzing the results from last year and uh, focusing in on the areas that we need to work on with our students. The individual results come f for each child, but they have not been received at the school yet, and as soon as they're received, they'll be sent to parents. Um, our AR program is continuing, and our primary students are doing really well in that area, up to grade four. Now, the grade five, sixes are not as heavily involved in the AR program as our grade ones to grade fours. Uh, we are continuing with the reading recovery program at the grade one level, and uh, the idea behind that is to ensure that all of our grade ones are reading at grade level by the end of grade one and we're seeing significant improvements with our grade one students. Uh, we have book fairs each year, library contests. Those things are ongoing throughout the year. So reports are going home tomorrow for our kindergarten to grade six students. And uh, for most students, I think the parents will be pleased with the reports, but there are areas where our students are not performing as they could. And some of the reasons for that is that some of the students, especially uh, at the higher grade levels, are not working to their potential. We have some students who are not doing homework at night time. And if your student is not doing their homework, then you can rest assured that they're not doing some other things as well. And if they have too much homework, probably that's an indication that they're not working as hard as they should be in school because oftentimes teacher will say, finish that when you go home. Um, i just like to uh, remind parents that there is support at the school if the children wanted to take advantage of it. At the grade four to six level, students can avail of the Tutors for Tuition program. Uh, every Wednesday, there are students at the, from the high school who are available to support the grade four to six students. Not many of our students have been availing of that support. Uh, we'll go on to technology now, just to mention uh, our teachers are uh, improving their skills in technology and as a result the students are, well, what we learn, we're teaching the students. And uh, our grade two and three students are now involved in what we call grassroots projects. 
and uh, parents have been, uh, I'm sure, aware of the uh, nutrition uh, project that they're doing. And our school will get $600 for, for students doing that project, and we'll put that back into our technology program. Our grade four to six students this year are availing of the lab because we only have three computers in the class, and that's been somewhat of a challenge for teachers in uh, doing, helping students improve their te technology skills. So this year we've uh, accessed Mr. Vivian's skills to work with our grade four to six students uh, two to three times a week. And our grade twos are putting out uh, bi-weekly uh, newsletters. Uh, it's called the News from the Twos. I must say it's pretty impressive newsletters and they should be commended on the fine job that they're doing. And now we'll move right along to our learning environment, our third uh, school growth plan, part of our growth plan. And uh, some of the things that we started in previous years are continuing. Uh, certainly our Lions Quest program, which has been focusing on good citizenship, learning to respect each other, is a program that is still being implemented from kindergarten to grade six level. And uh, although the students don't always um, apply the skills that they're learning. They're very familiar with what's right and what's wrong and uh, many of them we are seeing a lot of improvements and w especially in, when they are in conflict with each other they can oftentimes work out their problems themselves before they become big problems. Uh, Roots of Empathy is a program that was introduced last year at the grade one level. We have the baby coming to the class and the parent. We have a new baby this year it's uh, Dean Morrison's little uh, boy, and he's at the grade one class, and the students love him. And uh, of course, that's a program that also focuses on empathizing with each other. And over the as children come to understand how other people, how other people's feelings are affected by what we say and do, then hopefully they'll do things differently sometimes. That's the idea behind it. And this program is also being implemented at the high school level this year. I'm not sure if it's grade sevens or eights, but uh, Mr. Uh, Durnford is involved with uh, another baby and, uh, and uh, volunteer. So it's really nice to see. The half points uh, were here some time ago, and uh, of course that was focusing on respect. So we're pleased that, and our students certainly got the message. I talked to some of the students after, and the message came out loud and clear. Um, yesterday, uh, Constable Caldwell was in our, uh, we had an assembly, short assembly, uh, celebrating National Children's Day. And we talked about the rights and the responsibilities of children. And again, there was an opportunity to focus on bullying and treating each other respectfully. The mentoring program is again in place, and uh, Helen Swift, our new CIS worker, it has, is implementing that program. And both uh, Mrs. Penny and myself are involved as uh, support persons. Uh, we have 36, I think it's 36, I'm not quite sure, but it's 30 odd uh, high school students who are mentors for uh, our students this year. Of course, we had 75 students who applied to be mentees and we had to select only 36 of those. Uh, some students were disappointed, but hopefully we'll get them next year. And our snack program, we have to thank our volunteers. It's, uh, it's been a great success, and we're very pleased to see, our, uh, see it continue. Our students love it. Just want to take a minute to speak to the parents about the weather conditions now. Weather, weather's getting colder, we have wet, cold, snowy weather, and lots of wind. This is not the ideal area uh, for students out back of the school, so I suggest that you ensure that your child has warm clothing on when they come. Be prepared for the worst. Even when they leave school, sometimes it's cow, but by the end of the day, it's not a nice day. So make sure that they're dressed appropriately, and remember that Teachers are required to be at the school. The teacher on duty is required to be at school uh, 10 minutes before the bell to let children into the school on miserable days. There will be times when I'm sure parents will think that the children will be, should be in 
and teachers will think that it's not that bad. It, it just, there's always that uh, discretionary call there, so sometimes uh, people don't always see eye to eye, but hopefully we are working on it, and hopefully, for the most part, everybody will be happy that, with the decisions that are made. If there are some concerns, by all means, call us. We, we will try to uh, do the best that we can. Just a reminder, there is a bingo fundraiser this week. The money raised for the bingo, each student is given two books of t uh, bingo cards, and uh, they sell for a dollar a card or six dollars per uh, five dollars per book and the money that's raised will be utilized to buy uh, literacy material for our school ma mainly for our AR program and for guided reading and other teacher resources as needed and just uh, a couple of more co comments uh, we do appreciate your involvement uh, as parents uh, with your children we know that you're involved with the AR program, with them reading at home at night, and I know what a commitment that takes. And we thank you for being involved with our school. And uh, there's a Christmas concert coming up again this year. That's scheduled at this point in time for the 18th of December. If uh, That should be a Wednesday. In the event that it's not the 18th, it'll probably be set back to Monday the 16th. It depends on the high school schedule for um, for their awards night. Now, there's that this their awards night at this point in time schedule for the 18th. But there uh, there's a lot of students that are out of town that can't get home for the 18th. So I really don't know where that's going at this point in time. And that's it from A. J. Matthews at this point in time. Thanks, May. Good evening. This is the St. John Central High Report for Term One for the 2002-2003 school year. I'd like to welcome everybody back to uh, what will prove to be, I'm sure, another quite successful year here at St. John Central. As a start, I guess we'll begin with our academics. Um, recently, um, first term reports went home, and uh, the following is a list of results of how our students performed. In grade sevens, our new grade seven class, welcome to the high school, and I'm quite pleased with their performance. It's a very difficult transition from grade six to grade seven. And um, the students performed really well in, in grade seven. Their average as a class was 73.2. So uh, that's a very good and very significant average. So congratulations to those uh, students. And I certainly hope that they'll work even harder as they move through grade seven program into uh, the midterms and finals. In grade eight, uh, we have a class average of 78.7, so that's a, also a very strong showing, 78.7, for our grade eights. And the final group of our junior high school will be the grade nines, and they scored an average of 82.2. So it seems like as we get through the junior high, the grades seem to increase proportionally, and 82.2 is a very significant average. So congratulations to our grade eights, uh, sorry, grade nines, and keep up the hard work. Uh, in grade 10, our level ones, and to the senior high school, their average was 70.1 as a class. Um, our grade 11s have a very strong showing at 77.5. And our graduating class has an average of 74.9. So um, we have very high showing in uh, for our first term reports with uh, an average is ranging from 70 to 82. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, as we move in, into Christmas and onto the new year and midterms, I'm sure students will work even harder to raise their own personal best marks. With regard to open house, we had open house on uh, the 13th and 14th of November, and I'd like to thank all the parents for getting out and showing uh, the interest in their child's education and making an effort to get out. Um, at the open house, we have 120 students in 7 to 12, we had 75 parents show up, which is a uh, about a 65% rate of uh, parental um, appearance at the school. So uh, 75 parents out of 120, that's very good. And it's really nice to get a touch base with uh, all the parents and let them know of all the activities that's going on in our school. 
Um, so moving from the academics to the extracurriculars, we have uh, a lot of great things going on in school. Again, this year our kids are heavily involved with all kinds of activities with A.J. Matthews and St. John Central. We're again involved with mentoring and peer tutoring and peer helpers and tutors for tuition and the Duke of Edinburgh. Just It goes on and on and on. Um, with regard to some extracurriculars in uh, activities and sports, we have volleyball teams. Uh, both boys and girls have traveled out. Um, both our boys and girls softball teams traveled um, and hosted tournaments and both were regional winter winners and our girls represented our district in the 3A softball in Lamoline. So uh, congratulations to both teams. Our junior boys basketball and volleyball has started up as dinner hour again. We had a student leadership team travel to Stephenville that represented our school and what I understand was a great success. And our track and field team did extremely well and competing with all Western Newfoundland and finished third competing against such schools as uh, the high school in Port of Bass and the high school in Stephenville and Herman and Regina and Cornerbrook. So uh, they finished third in the entire district. So congratulations and be commended for that. Um, I would like to say thank you to all the parents, all the volunteers and workers and everyone who had a hand in our very successful career day. I have no shame in saying that our our career day at our school at St. John Central is held as the model for this district and uh, when I travel around the district talk to principals and uh, teachers alike, they model their career day after what has been going on in our community. So to everyone who has had a hand into it, I thank you um, tremendously for all your effort and your time. Um, it is been nothing short of miraculous how, how terrific and how well run this career day was and uh, it was a big success and I want to thank everybody for helping get involved. As well I'd like to remind um, all parents and students that uh, recycling is still ongoing. You can bring your recyclables along any day to the school and drop them off in the porch or the containers placed around the school. Um, it's a great source of, of uh, revenue for kids traveling across or to purchase resources for our school. Um, you know, it's, it's only garbage, so if you had uh, two separate garbage containers, one for your regular garbage, one for recyclables, and just bring along the recyclables to the school, the government matches us dollar for dollar in what recyclables we bring to the school. So that certainly goes a long way, and we want to send uh, children across to Steve or we want to buy books for our AR programs or computer resources or whatnot. You know, the list goes on and on. We work on a very uh, shoestring budget, so uh, any bit of help at all could certainly help our kids and their education which as I pointed out to you, and I'm sure Ms. Benwa has as well, um, the kids are receiving a first-rate education both academically and uh, extracurricular. So um, we encourage you to get involved with recycling and uh, have your child bring along the recyclables to the school on uh, any day of the week, but uh, we try to collect them on Fridays particularly. And finally, just as a reminder, that uh, 7 to 12, there will be a closeout day on uh, next Thursday and Friday, I believe it's the 28th and 29th of November. Um, the teachers will be traveling to Stephenville for a workshop and uh, all the high schools will be closed in the district as teachers travel to Stephenville on uh, some professional development and uh, some workshops. So that's it from St. John Central. By all means, if you have any questions, so we'd uh, be glad to answer them and take, uh, take the opportunity to drop out of school and uh, pay us a visit anytime. Until next time, good night. Now over to Constable Ron Caldwell with the court report. Court was held in Burgio on uh, November 20th at 9.30 on the morning. Uh, a 22-year-old male from Ramia pled guilty to a charge of possession of a narcotic for the purpose of trafficking and received a fine of $5,000 with a victim uh, fine surcharge of $750 and was placed on probation for two years. A 48-year-old male from Burgio pled guilty to a charge of impersonating a peace officer and was given a suspended sentence and probation for two years. A 45-year-old male from Francois pled guilty to a charge of assault and to utter of charge of uttering threats. Sentencing was put off until a pre-sentence report was done. Sentencing will be the 22nd of January, 2003. Plea was not entered into the charge of three counts of assault by a 30-year-old male from Burgio, but has been set over to uh, 22nd of January, 2003 for plea. Trial was conducted in a highway traffic matter, and the accused was found not guilty, and the matter is dismissed. Now, this is the court brief for this week. Thank you. Mr. Wayne Vivian invited us to the school on Thursday of this week to take a look at some of the art projects his students have completed. Mr. Vivian's class have been busy since September working on their art projects. These scallop shells were done by the art 
2226 class. Mr. Vivian instructed the class to do a stage on these scallop shells. The students went to work, and each of these pieces of art is different. Some add both the wharf and the stage. Some add bolts, wood piles, and some even add smoke coming out of the chimney. The class did a very nice job on this project. I hope they have gotten good grades. Next, we look at the Art 1201 grid drawings. These students have to apply the principles of art and designs and elements of art and designs. These pictures were taken with the school's digital camera and the students enlarged them three times. Just below these drawings are more drawings that show the principles of art and design. They include movement, repetition, and balance. They also show the elements of art and design, for example, line, shape, texture, and color. The students are also working on plaques, which were not quite ready for display. If you get the opportunity to go to the school, stop by the main lobby just outside the staff room and take a look at these art projects. They are quite nice. Also on Thursday, we visited the new school. This time when we visited, we were given permission to go inside the building. The site manager, Jim Payne, walked through with us and we talked as we went. As you would expect, there are lots of activities.
Resort Center and I think Resort Center share with preschool.
said no. Uh, right now they're uh, they've strung some wires, but uh, not a lot. I'm very uh, busy in that gene part now wiring.
for the roof. Jim says that the shingles are only in rolls. So they're waiting for the roofers to come back in there. Now over to Mayor Ann with the council report. Uh, good evening. Virgil Town Council held its uh, second meeting for the month on Wednesday, November the 20th. Uh, we had six members in attendance and uh, the meeting was a fairly short one, I believe, about only an hour and a half or something like that. Anyway, items up for discussion, of course, our standard one is the phase two of the water treatment plant. And uh, during the week, the town manager had discussion with uh, uh, Brooks Construction. That's the company that has the uh, contract to complete phase two. They're the same company that did phase one. And uh, figures coming in from them is uh, that it's going to take at least 14 weeks uh, for delivery of uh, materials from the manufacturer to, uh, to start the project going. So uh, needless to say, uh, that was a bit different than the information that had been given us by the engineers. However, uh, that's, that's it. There's not much we can do about that. Uh, apparently the equipment which is being used there is uh, not the type of equipment that you can walk in and just pick off the shelves or anything like that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's done on a per order basis. Uh, so therefore, uh, you, uh, you've got to put in your order and, and, and the equipment is not even manufactured as yet. So given 14 weeks, you know, we're probably, uh, I, I guess conservatively, we're looking at uh, probably uh, mid-March before equipment starts arriving on site. However, like I said, there's not a big lot we can do. Uh, the uh, the uh, cost overrun, our share is an extra $72,000. Uh, we've got that in place with the bank and so on. And uh, and that's about it. Uh, it seems, less, seems as if uh, it'll be standing still now until at least uh, mid-March. But in any event, hopefully, you know, this will come to a end sometime. And uh, maybe we're looking at June. I don't know. Another item which uh, has been receiving a lot of attention from time to time is the roof over the rink. And uh, since I last spoke to you, our member, Mr. B uh, our uh, federal member, Mr. Bill Matthews, was in town and he met with the uh, with the rink committee, and uh, Bill sort of supported it's what's known as an echo system, and, and that is an artificial ice making uh, equipment for the for the rink. Uh, so therefore, that's what the recreation commission is now going for. Uh, approximately three quarters of a million dollars is what uh, has been. Uh, uh, that's the estimate for this, uh, this facility. And uh, it is felt that uh, this three quarters of a million dollars can be accessed by using the 125, 125 to 130,000, which uh, the town of Virgil presently has. There's been some questions with regard to the plebiscite, which was held some time ago when people said they weren't interested in an arena. And I just want to pass on to people that the town council has not steered away from the decision that was reached in that plebiscite. Uh, there has been no money uh, uh, allocated by the town for this new facility. There has been no commitment with regard to the operation thereafter. Now, I'm sure you all understand that the town of Burjo has been budgeting $10,000 a year for recreation purposes. This has been going on for years and years and years. And rightfully so, the town should put some money into recreation. So, you know, at this present time, the town have not even entertained or considered uh, putting money beyond $10,000. And whether that will go into the, the rink if it should come about, uh, certainly have been no decision made there either. It is council's position that, uh, you know, uh, the rink is going to be a user pay and, uh, and hopefully that uh, this will come about and something uh, 
in addition to just the mere necessities of life will be available for our young people and maybe even our older people in Bergio. So I'd just like to pass that on, you know, that the town have not committed itself uh, to this project in the sense that your tax dollar is going to be on the hook and that it's something that's going to nickel and dime uh, you people to death because that is not the situation. With regard to tidy towns, it appears as if we're getting worse all the time. Uh, I believe we, we, we won uh, four pitcher plants in the year uh, 2000 and we got three in the year 2001. Now I've got to say as far as tidiness of our town, I thought we were a whole lot tidier in uh, year 2001. We had the beginnings of a mural on our, uh, on our museum, but uh, I don't know, and I'm not so sure about those uh, tidy towns things. Uh, everything starts, seems like things start out good and then they've got a, uh, a way of ending up to being a, a money raising project. So it'll be something that when the time comes again to register that our town will have to consider whether we're going to be a participant in tidy towns. So that's something that'll be dealt with at a later date. Uh, apparently uh, the provincial government has made emergency funding available to Burjo in the amount of $37,000. Now, you know, this money has got to be spent at the most inopportune time of year, which is now and winter and so on. Uh, the provincial government is leaning towards brush cutting on the far end of the Burjo Road. The jobs are supposed to be for Burjo people. And I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. Uh, getting people from Burjo into the far end of the road and cutting brush at this time of year, to be quite honest with you, uh, doesn't accomplish a big lot. However, having said that, Maybe there is people here who are badly in need of this, uh, this money, these hours to make them eligible for EI and so on. But you know, it's too bad when you've got to spend the money and at the end of the, the, uh, the projects uh, you haven't accomplished anything. So uh, one thing I mean the town is looking at is, uh, like I said, I believe in my last broadcast, uh, getting uh, some proper signage out there on the road for to try to get a few more tourists to come down into Burgio. But uh, we're at a loss as to what else we can do here in town to avail of that money and make better use of it. So if there's any of you out there who've got some suggestion that on something that uh, you feel uh, could employ a few people and at the end of the, uh, the project, uh, you, you know there'll be something which benefits the town then uh, certainly give the town manager a call and uh, I'm sure you'll pass it on and see if it qualifies uh, uh, for this type of funding. Uh, snow clearing, we haven't had much but we've had a little brush with it. Uh, there's been some problems on the Burjo Road. Some of it was brought to the council meeting at our meeting. Um, since the meeting I've checked with one of the uh, supervisors and the day in question, they did experience a lot of breakdown with their equipment. There is a brand new piece of equipment here, right off the block, uh, computerized, uh, uh, sand spreader and so on, it's, it's brand new. And that piece of equipment was working, but apparently, I don't know if it was Tuesday, I believe, that they experienced a lot of trouble and uh, I think they could only, <laughs> the, the plow from Burjo had to go right to the Trans Canada and back and that was the only one working, so. I guess that's just a, a start-up bug or something. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, the uh, Department of Work Services and Transportation, they are responsible now for the main road through town from, uh, from uh, the, uh, I'll say the government pier into Aaron's Arm. So that's what apparently they'll be starting off with uh, when there's snow. They'll be going from there to Aaron's Arm and back and then on into the, in over the Trans-Canada. Uh, if there's some problem uh, that their plows would be needed in uh, plowing the road, uh, the highway, and cannot plow the road in town, it has been indicated to us that maybe the town's plows will have to do it 
and the town will invoice uh, work services and transportation. So, uh, you know, to us it looks as, as if it's a win situation and hopefully that uh, it will work out. The, uh, that was just about it for our meeting. I'd just like to pass on uh, that uh, we did have water samples taken in town on the 13th of November. I believe it's on television. Uh, all of the samples turned out good. And again, I'll say it once more, I know the water doesn't look good, but the tests are coming back good, so I guess you can't, uh, that's all that we can pass on, you know, is that uh, the, uh, the inspection branch uh, of the provincial affairs, they send back and say that there's no coliforms, no bacteria, and that the water is satisfactory for drinking. So that was the tests of, uh, that were taken on the 13th. Uh, invoices in the amount of $24,580.07 was approved for payment. Uh, at the present time, the town manager is working on the 2003 budget. We're a bit late in getting it completed, and it's not the town council's fault. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, at this time, we don't have the proper form to do the budget to complete the budget. And the reason I think behind that is that it's, it's, it's over a year now that the provincial government, uh, along with the committee that was struck and uh, members of that committee is from the Newfoundland Labrador Federation Municipalities, and what they're trying to do, they're trying to bring up uh, a new method of uh, issuing the municipal operating grants. And uh, they're trying to come up with something that is more equitable and something that will benefit small towns. Uh, whether it'll benefit us or probably go against us, we're not sure because everything hasn't been put in place. And until such time as, uh, as the, the uh, formula for doing the municipal operating grant is known to us, well then of course we can't complete the budget. However, uh, we are working on it with the hope that there will be no tax increases. Uh, the way it's looking now, it looks like our new water system, the most probably we'll get out of it in the year 2003 will be six months. Just what that's gonna cost per year, we don't know. So we've got uh, quite a few variables, quite a few question marks. Uh, but uh, anyway, hopefully that when it's all done up, it'll be for the better of everybody and we'll have good water and I, I, I wouldn't say list taxes, but let's just hope we can do it and not have to increase taxes. And thank you very much for watching this evening. On Friday of this week, we had an interview with some members of the Roof Over the Rink Committee. We have with us in our studio this afternoon John Crant and Owen Marsden. Uh, they're both... Um, committed members with the roof over the rink. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our studio. Now, John, I understand you uh, you want to give us an update on uh, where your committee is. Uh... Well, I guess, Marie, what I'll do, I'll start off where it all began, I guess. Okay. When I got on council, uh, there was a recreation fund that was raised through telethons and everything else for the arena. Uh, it was a, basically what it was a rent, uh, raised for. It was in the in an amount of about $123,000 that was sitting in a, in a bank account. Uh, and I was wondering if there was something we could do with recreation. So basically what I'd done back in February, I called a public meeting at the fire hall. And at that time there were roughly around 24 people showed up and it was interested in recreation. And I kind of had an open forum for any suggestions that anybody might have what we could do with this recreation money. And the consensus of the committee, that the group that was there that night, was to, to want to go back and revisit the idea of putting a roof over the existing rink. And that was the, pretty much the consensus for the night. So what we done from there, we, uh, we decided that we'd form a committee. And uh, on February 26th, we, we had a, a meeting, and the committee was formed. And at that time, Owen was nominated or elected, if you want to call it, to go chair of the committee. Uh, and that's basically where it all started, so I'll okay. hand it over to Holman now, and he can give pretty much help on where we've came from there. Okay, now I want to understand that uh, when our MP Bell Matthews was in town on November 11th, the your committee met with him. So you want to uh, give us uh, some uh, indication of what happened there at that meeting? 
I think the, um, I think that that meeting was important because it um, it gave us enough room then I think to put the old proposal together okay. because we we had we had um, talked about the ecosystem which um, is, is simply a, a system that that's put in the sewage of the building similar to the one that's in the cold storage of the plant. Okay. Okay. That would um, would give us some freezing ability. Um, but at the same time, it was going to, we thought at least as a committee, would put us over our budget, which is, as John said, on about 123000 So we were saying no to it up to that point. But uh, Bill, Bill assured us that, um, Bill Matthews, that is, assured us that we could. We, he, he felt that uh, two things. One, with our $123,000, we could put the system in. And because of the breakdown through this Canada Newfoundland Infrastructure Program, which we're applying for, um, the way it broke down, we would still be, you know, some a little over $100,000 for our share of it. So, um, so that was one thing. And the other thing is that he said we could withdraw this application or that part of the application anytime we wanted to. So, somewhere down the road, if if we're, uh, you know, we, if we can't meet our budget of around $123,000. Um, then we can say no to the ecosystem. We simply won't put it in there. Uh, the community, when we started, the community wanted a roof, sides, and kind of natural freezing, you know, where we'd open up the doors and let the weather take care of the freezing. Um, so this, you know, this kind of uh, said, okay, uh, if we got the money, as, as Mr. Matthews was saying, if, if we've got enough money to, to, to get this system, why don't we? Um, the town council, we had a meeting with them earlier. They, they thought we should go with a, you know, some freezing capabilities. Um, Kelvin Parsons and Oliver Langdon thought we could afford it, so we said, okay, fine, let's let's do it. Let's let's get this ecosystem, or at least apply for it. And uh, somewhere down the road, when you know we see what the financial thing is going, then we'll decide if we're going to install it. If we can, we'll put it in there. And of course, then it comes uh, whoever we're going to pay for it. And we'll address that at the time, but I mean, I, I guess what it means for us, if we can, we can put that system in there. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have to use it. I mean, we're told this will cost somewhere in the neighborhood six, seven thousand dollars a year to operate. Well, if we, you know, I mean, if we got it and we can find some way to operate, that's fine. If we can't operate, it'll be there. You okay. know, if the economy returns, that sort of thing. Okay. Now, obviously, you must have enough funds. You, like, you call yourself the roof over the rink committee for lack of a better term, I guess. So obviously you must have the funds there to put the actual roof over the, the rink if you're talking about the uh, freezing system. Yeah, but that's yeah, the only okay. thing that was, yeah, we we, uh, we pretty much had all, all the other budgetary okay. things taken care of. Uh, I can give you a breakdown if you want. On, you, yeah, yeah uh, well, what we've got here is a pre-engineered structure. The building would cost in the area of 250000 The footing foundation uh, for the building would be $80,000. Uh, building installation, 75,000. The ecosystem, which is now is, is in our plan, is 145,000. Life and safety, 8,000. Plumbing, 20,000. Electrical, 20,000. Mechanical, 20,000. The insulation and sheeting, 50,000. Engineering fees at 10% is uh, 11,800. And taxes, HST, is 102,000. And the grand total is 730,800. So th this 123,000 you're talking about, would be our community share towards that 700,000? Yeah, okay. the, the breakdown is like this. The way we understand okay. it right now from, from talk to okay. officials is the town of, of Burgio is $100,000 uh, that we, you know, as you know, okay. we, we have there. The federal government be up for 246267 Provincial government, $392,533 for a grand total, 738800 oh, okay. All right, so everything. So this is the proposal now that you is done, is completed? Completed, sent in. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you just wanted to let the community know about this, uh, where you were. Yeah, we've been uh, asked, you know, since like John said in February when we started, uh, where are we to, you know, uh, with this application. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, we, did, we did have one actually a little earlier that we was going to send in uh, without the ecosystem. But okay. this one now is, is a completed. The Revised by okay. Greg Elier, we've got a nice proposal gone okay. in, and, and uh, we're we're told we can we can uh, uh, meet you know the financial commitment okay. and our share of it. So, 
So we're going to try this. Uh, no promises to anybody, but uh, you know, if everybody is true to the word, then we can we can do this thing with the money we've got. Yeah. Now the proposal was sent in. So what's the next step? It's just waiting to for the proposal to be accepted. Something like that. Now, yeah. uh, uh, Bell Mathis did tell us, f for his part, the federal government part, he's prepared to sign it off when when the application, you know, if you providing province uh, does their part, he's pre prepared to to sign off on the agreement. And I think John's got some meetings he's hoping to get together. Basically, you got to start with the provincial government. It's, okay. It's, once they put their forward foot forward first, then everything else just falls in line. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's all. I guess. Uh, do you have a time frame for this now? Do, like uh, a general time frame to say, well, it could be March, it could be April, it could be next year in December? Is there? You just don't know. Uh, well, it's, it's hard to predict you know, okay. what, what's going on because I mean, there's there's talks in the election and stuff, and that was one of the more one okay. of the reasons that we wanted to get this proposal in because mm -hmm. lots of times uh, stuff that's put behind the back there all of a sudden comes to the forefront fairly okay. quick when yeah. somebody wants something done. Yeah. Okay. So we, so we want to get want to get the proposal in, and we and, and that being a system and ready to roll it once. Something happened. Okay. I want to make it quite clear to the people of Virginia that we're only spending what is there. We have no intentions of borrowing any money. We're only seeing what we can get with what's already there. Okay. There'll be yeah. no no extra tax burden on anybody in the town or, or any, anything like that. Yeah. And as it relates to the ecosystem, I guess once it's there, uh, it may come down to a, to a, to a two fee structure. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, on natural ice, when you got to pay for your lighting and stuff, you pay X number of dollars to play hockey. Temperature warms up, and you want the ecosystem turned on. Well, of course, if you want it to turn on, you're going to have to pay for that to get done. So. Okay. Yeah. So basically, that's what it, what it come down to. So basically, that ecosystem is going to be put there, and uh, if the funds is there and people are willing to pay, it will be used. Yes. If not, it won't be used. Yeah. Yeah. That's good size. Okay. But yeah. we basically, you know, the way we're told, we're, we can get a free ecosystem here. Okay. You know, that's that's the way it looks to us. I okay. mean, that's what they're telling us. Plus the fact this application has got a better chance. We're told with an ecosystem involved with the proposal because then uh, the government says, well, okay, if we don't put something in there to freeze your ice and you're having a problem, are you saying, you know, at some point you're going to come back to us and now you're going to want some, some way to freeze the ice. Okay. So we prefer to see it up front. Yeah. So if they're telling us we got the money there to, to do that, then we're saying, fine, thank you. You know, now, you know, then the burden comes on us now. How do we, how do we uh, the expense of the thing? Like John was saying, I guess, if, you know, if, if somebody says, well, I think you should have to turn on, fine, you pay for it, we'll turn on, no problem. You yeah, know. okay. So it's, uh, it'll be a decision of whoever the Matt. powers may be at that time, if there's a committee for... There will be a management team looking, oh, okay. after, looking yes. after the rink and they'll yeah. sit the rates and they'll manage the system. Okay. Yeah. So, so is there anything else you guys like to add? No. <coughs> no. Uh, no basically what we were told, see, uh, Marie, was that with the $100,000, the way the formula is going to work, it's going to take the hundred thousand regardless. Okay. You know, what I mean, if we went yeah. and said we're just going to go with the roof and sides, the hundred thousand is going to be gone. Yeah. yeah. And the way that they jiggle the numbers and make make it work, that we take the hundred thousand and put the ecosystem there. So we said, like, it didn't make a difference. Well, why not? Why not go for the you know the, the full package? And if, if they if they turn us down, well, it's, it's government turn us down. If they say you can't have the ecosystem, you can only have the regular building, well, at least then, if we has problems, then the role will say, well, we did ask for it, and you didn't give it to oh, us. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, well, thank you guys for coming in. Thank you, Marie. Stay with us for Off the Rack, the community events, and the BBS Playbill, all after this. Participation, finding solutions. Rosella's challenge, finding time for her daughter, Leticia. As a single parent, I think one of the toughest things is whether or not the relationship that you have with your child is as concrete or as solid as you think that it is. Physical activity is one of the ways in which we have so much fun together. Rosella got some great ideas from Canada's Physical Activity Guide. What it says to me is get up off your duff and go for a walk. People get to see how should I block in physical activity in my life. When we're out playing, we're interacting and laughing and having a great time. I think it cements the relationship. The guide will help you make wise choices about physical activity. For your free copy of Canada's Physical Activity Guide, call 1-888-334-9769. Participation says, try it. Off the rack. This week as we scanned our tape rack, we came across a program called Monthly Magazine where this program focuses on Burgio's youth. 
Here we see the Burgio Bears. Most of these boys have since graduated and the rest are about to graduate this year. Let's look back to January Welcome to the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. I'm Rebecca Young. The winners of the LOL TV Bingo were Selena Melbourne and Bessie Dumford. Congratulations to you both. The next scheduled TV Bingo will be hosted by the AJ Matthews on Wednesday, November 27th. One game for $300. Cards are available from any student of the AJ Matthews and are in most stores around town. Cards cost a dollar each or six or five dollars. Please support the school and apply TV Bingo. You could win $300 just in time for Christmas. The UCW will be having their annual fall sale on Saturday, November 30th at 2 p.m. in the fire hall. Admission is 50 cents with the door prize to be awarded. There will be baked items, craft items, knitted goods, and crocheted items. Afternoon tea will be served and cost $2. Come out for an enjoyable afternoon and you may find that perfect Christmas gift for someone special. The Anglican Church will be hosting a prayer brunch on Saturday, November 30th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Parish Hall. The general public is invited to come along for prayer and fellowship. There will be a speaker. Take time from your busy schedule to pause and reflect through prayer and praise with friends. We look forward to seeing you there. Anyone who has not received their 2003 community calendar, or if you would like a second copy, please contact Stan Kosser. Calendars cost $6. The Anglican Church will be having a Tree of Love again this year for Christmas. On December 11th at 6.30 p.m., we will be loading an outdoor Christmas tree in front of our church. Each bulb on the tree will represent a departed loved one, you may give what you wish towards the bulb with a minimum of $2. If you would like a bulb lit in memory of a loved one, you can drop your information into the offering plate or pass it along to Reverend Russell before the deadline on Sunday, December 8th, following the evening service. The funds raised from this memorial are used to cover any costs related to the memory tree, and the remainder is deposited into a youth account to be used for youth ministry programs. In the past, a new Sunday school program was purchased costing $600, and a donation was given to Teens Encountering Christ, a diocesan program to help young people grow in their faith. This year we will be purchasing all new strings of lights for the memory tree, 
and plans are being put in place for a new youth program to start in January. Funds from the youth account will be used to purchase teaching materials and supplies to run the program. Your contribution to the memory tree is an opportunity for you to remember loved ones in a special way and you will also be helping support our young people to grow in their faith. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. If your group organization has an upcoming event planned, we will be happy to advertise it for you. Just call the BBS office by Wednesday of each week to have items included in this portion of our broadcast. That concludes the community event segment of tonight's broadcast. See you next week. BBS Playbill. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing AJ Matthews TV Bingo. Join Pans in the Gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. For This Week in Review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.